Hi, and welcome to this presentation. Uh, your presenters are Kelly Arispe, and in collaboration with Amber Hoy, we've put together uh, this presentation today. The title of our presentation is Practical Ways to Simplify and Systematize Flipped Teaching for Language Learning. And the slides that will follow will touch on important elements for teaching online, learner autonomy, um, some synchronous ideas that you can employ to make a meaningful experience for language learning in your classroom, come what may, uh, as well as some asynchronous ideas. And in both of those uh, spots and both of those highlights here, I will be showing you some technologies that are really high level technologies as well as some low level technologies, depending on your preference and where you fall on the continuum for language uh, teaching online. Before we begin, I wanted to highlight three axioms for computer assisted language learning. Um, first and foremost, technology will illuminate your pedagogy uh, for the good and for the worst. I do not believe that technology can replace a language instructor or teacher. I think that you are an invaluable uh, component. You facilitate meaningful experiences for your learners. And so um, I want to be very clear and upfront that uh, your pedagogy is front and center here. And really it's a mind shift in thinking through what technologies can augment those meaningful learning opportunities that you've built into your course. I really believe in systematic approaches to teaching and especially when it comes to call or computer assisted language learning. So my suggestion to you as it's highlighted here in number two is to pick a few tools and use them over and over again. And that's not only for you as the teacher to help simplify your role as you conceptualize a course that is either fully online or hybrid in some fashion. It's also for your learners. We often uh, make the an, an assumption that our learners are just equipped to be able to use all of these tools online. And what we know actually is that the digital native is a myth and if anything, they're really good at using technology for social purposes, uh, not always excelling in how to use them for educational purposes. And so it's really important that you don't overwhelm your learners as well. And then thirdly, I am a big believer in choice at the center of my formative and summative assessments and at the center of my practice is learner and teacher autonomy. I really believe that language learners, when they lead with what, um, when they're given the chance to lead uh, with uh, their own interests, their engagement uh, skyrockets, and you're going to be much happier also assessing um, assessments and student work that comes back in an authentic manner that truly is at the heart of what they want to do. It empowers our learners to engage. What do I mean by learner autonomy? For those of you that are new to this concept, it's a general uh, principle that is uh, characterized by learners who take responsibility for their own learning process. They are empowered, they're engaged. I center my work on learner autonomy, specifically within the realm of language teaching and learning uh, through three important elements, awareness. So one of the things that technology can afford for our learners is that all of a sudden they can archive, they can record, whether it is audio or whether it's multimodal, um, including video, they can record their language production and become aware of what they're able to produce for the positive, how, can, can leading to a higher um, esteem perhaps for what they're able to do in the target language. Um, but they're also uh, able to become more aware of what they need to do um, in order to, uh, to, to move along the performance um, continuum to uh, higher, higher levels of, of performance. Um, and then reflection is an important part of my practice as well. I think that it's important that we give the our learners the time and space to think about what they're doing with a language, to reflect on um, Kindu statements are wonderful ways to uh, provide our learners with concrete um, ways to reflect about what they're doing with the target language. Um, and then to be able to work in either a collective and collaborative goal setting mechanism in your class about what they can work towards. Again, can do statements can be great for that. Um, learner autonomy truly is um, something that, that must be front and center um, in a face-to-face -face classroom, but it is especially uh, leveraged well in an online setting. Here's some more um, 
principles of language uh, of learner autonomy rather uh, as it um, as it fit with uh, language teaching and language learning. And in this presentation, you can also access more resources, um, references if you're curious to learn more about learner autonomy. But without further ado, I want to get to the actual uh, tangible, concrete components of this presentation, which um, dive deep into practical uses for language teaching. I'm going to first start with synchronous meeting ideas because, again, as we plan for the fall and as we conceptualize a classroom that needs to be uh, flexible and nimble to uh, adapt to the changing tides of the pandemic, um, it is important to think about what you want to reserve and hold on to in that synchronous space when you meet with your students uh, in real time. And so I'm going to show you uh, some technology spotlights, specifically some free authentic images online. And one thing that I really treasure in that synchronous meeting space is, is the opportunity to use warm ups that are fun and engaging. And so, in this first one, I'm going to show you a warm up for presentational speaking in Zoom or Google Meets, depending on whatever platform you're using. Um, this source, so if you click on this link, this um, brings you to a, a, a a source from Medium whereby an instructor provides a whole host of really fun activities that can be adapted to the language learning classroom um, that are all centered on this idea of warm up. So here's one activity that I've done um, that's quite fun. You set a date or a memory, a remember when. So you set the time or the place. And then depending what you would do is you would have students type in their name in the chat box, and that would be your order, okay? So um, you as the instructor would then call on the first person whose name first appears, and they would start the scene with, remember in 2019 when we didn't have uh, this global pandemic, and then the next person would have to add on a sentence. So this is a fun presentational speaking uh, warm up where they only have to contribute one sentence. And again, because it's a remember one, it's a really useful warm up for our intermediate learners who are trying to, in very limited quantities, use the past tense. Okay, another idea that's similar would be like a story spine. Again, this is uh, directly coming from that source on Medium, but adapted to language learning. What I like about this is that the teacher could provide scaffolds here with these um, these chunks, right, that help get that um, the students started with that sentence. And so this wouldn't be relegated to maybe a certain moment in time, but rather could be centered on a theme, right? And so once upon a time, you could help um, start the story, or you could leave it up to the creative uh the creativity of your class. And so again, here's more scaffolded for them, but the idea is similarly, they would type their name in the chat box and then you all of a sudden have a, a, a roll call and students can anticipate when it's gonna be their turn to have to add on to the story. Now what's being, what's being uh, worked here, exercised, it's not just presentational speaking, it's also interpretive listening because in order for them to continue the story, they have to make sure that they're engaging and listening to, uh, to their, uh, their classmates. So this can be an effective way to do a warm up. In terms of presentational writing um, in Zoom or Google Meets, um, as I mentioned, I like to use authentic resources. Um, this comes from actually the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian is uh, wonderful, as we all know, but they also have provided free access to all of their images. And so um, I teach Spanish and Spanish linguistics. And so um, for me, it's an incredible resource to be able to go in there and look at um, this Chicano uh, art series, and I can gather from uh, these resources something that is authentic, it's beautiful, it's got um, representation for the population that I, I'm teaching, maybe in this unit where we're exploring Chicano identity or looking at what, what does it mean to be Chicano. Um, and so here, for even at the novice level, I can embed uh, meaningful and authentic culture. For the novice learner, right, in a warm-up, 
if they're writing something down, um, we want them to write down with words that associate. That is the, the, the task type or that is the quantity of language and the quality of the language that they can produce at this level. And you can see in this picture, because of the colors that are here, there is so much that a novice learner can do. They can describe clothing. They can describe colors. They could quantify how many people are in the picture. Um, and if they could, they could add an adjective. There are so many things that you as the instructor could encourage them to do with their limited ability for output. If you are teaching an intermediate uh, level class, you might actually uh, use a warm up as a way for them to make a prediction about what is coming in the class. And so maybe you're going to be talking about the Mexican Revolution and introducing that. And so you bring in, again, drawing from this authentic resource from the Chicano Art uh, Exhibit Gallery in the Smithsonian, you bring in this piece of art and you have them in a sentence write down, make a predic prediction. I think that. Right, and so you could provide those scaffolds. You could give them a dehydrated start, you know, dehydrated sentence um, to help them, or you could leave it as that. Now, if they're at the advanced level, a great warm up might be taking something authentic um, from a newspaper in the target language. I'm using this um, in English here so that it's uh, language agnostic and uh, fair enough uh, for everybody to access. But you could use today's front pages and you could find a front page headline from a region that you are um, exploring or that represents the language that you're teaching. And you could ask students based off of a provocative title to take a stand about what they think. Um, that is not easy to do in presentational writing at the advanced level. And so that is a great way to get them um, just starting to think about this and, and really working within that advanced uh, boundary. When it comes to interpersonal speaking and in Zoom or Google Meets with uh, with a warm up, one thing that I like to do is I will use a picture. Um, I uh, one of the ways that I connect with my students in an online sphere is I try to share some things about my personal life so that they feel like I'm a real human um, and that I'm sharing a little bit about my life. And I found that that oftentimes opens up uh, opportunities for them to feel that they can do the same with me. And so one thing that I might do is I might share a picture like this where. I, kind of looks odd, right? Um, the more ambiguous or the funnier, the better. Um, and a way to encourage more of a semi-interpersonal speaking uh, task is that you could have some students look at this uh, picture and then you could call on students to ask you a question. You could also have it be interpersonal writing and they could write down their question to you. Now what's great about this is that all of a sudden with just one picture and one question, I have a whole bank of questions that I can draw off of and I can provide really meaningful comprehensible input about something that's real um, in the target language. And me as an instructor, I'm really cognizant right, of the vocabulary that we're working with within this lesson or in this unit, and I'm using everything I, that I can um, to uh, provide more frequency of those, of those words, of those chunks, of those expressions, whatever we're doing in class. And so this is one um, way that you can use warm up quite effectively with very little uh, work on, on, your, on your behalf as the instructor, a little setup. Now, in terms of the technology that you can use for all of these warm-ups, um, Pull Everywhere is a great technology um, that you can do online. It's very easy for learners to um, simply use their mobile device, or they can use their tablet or their desktop, and they can type in their presentational writing response to uh, those prompts above. And there is a tutorial here that's embedded for you. It shows you how you can use Pull Everywhere synchronously as well as asynchronously. And so I, I encourage you to check it out. Amber Hoy has designed these excellent tutorials for you and shares them with you. Um, the other thing that you can do that is very low tech is you can ask your students online to come with a blank piece of paper and a large marker, a Sharpie. It does not work well with a ballpoint pen or pencil. So you need to make sure that they have a large marker, um, a thick marker, and then a piece of paper. And obviously this is going to be important if you teach at the elementary level that students have a command to be able to write uh, legibly and clearly. And so um, you could use this whiteboard and what you would wanna do is that when it comes time for them to uh, share out, 
you would then um, ensure that you're in gallery view and then have students hold up their sheet of paper in their camera and you as an instructor can see um, what they what they produce and then call in some of the students maybe to read their response or use the responses that you see in that gallery view to scaffold up meaningful ways to again provide more uh, language more comprehensible input for them all right so moving on to asynchronous ideas so I am a big uh, believer in uh, in task-based language uh, learning. And one of my favorite ways to do this is online, is by using today's front pages. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you could do this um, with a, some concrete examples. So I'm gonna show you some concrete examples of task-based presentational writing or speaking. Now, a technology suggestion here in terms of the input, again, today's front pages is really nice. You can select the region um, and that helps us narrow in um, which uh, sources um, in the target language um, are authentic, right? This is a real source. It gets updated every day. And so you can pull something from, if you're teaching, um, if you're teaching German, you can pull something from Berlin um, right there and you can grab uh, a newspaper article and I'm gonna show you how they, you could integrate this in some meaningful tasks for your learners. Okay, so in terms of technology suggestion, I highly recommend Padlet. Padlet ha offers three free boards and one way that you could recycle those three boards is that once you have used it for um, for a, your class is that you can clear your board and then you can recycle it again. So that's one way that you can um, use it at its free level. However, if you find that it's useful to you, um, you might decide to uh, pay for a little bit more um, accessibility so that you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to keep uh, clearing and reusing, although it's always good to recycle. Um, but these are three um, these are three sources that might help you in terms of um, getting started. You can check whether or not it's safe for your school and your and your uses. And then you can also their their Padlet blog is excellent because uh, based off of uh, it's kind of like a living FAQ where you can find um, all sorts of answers to questions you might have about the tool. All right, in terms of going back to, so task-based for presentational writing or speaking, tasks, truly task-based oriented activities um, do not focus on discrete linguistic elements. Rather, they ask students to do something functional and meaningful. Um, and I'm gonna show you that. So there are all sorts of task-based um, activities that can be meaningful for learners. Um, but the goal is that it, it heightens engagement and interest because students are focused on complete completing the task, not in filling out a worksheet, right? And so um, one of the things that can be really fun is using an authentic resource right here. I've used, um, this is uh, from an actual, uh, you know, a hard copy newspaper in Spain, but you can obviously do this for any of the today's front pages online uh, newspapers. So envision this, conceptualize this using something online. This is um, a great task for novice, high, intermediate, low learners. What you would do is you would pull, and again, um, you could pull something, uh, uh, an article that is somewhat related to a theme that you're working with. Um, in this case, the, the, the topic was on tourism and the phobia of tourism, especially in Madrid. And so here is a caption that's a bit uh, provocative and uh, the students would have to read the caption and then they would have to come up with a title that they think could fit that caption. Now you can focus their attention on linguistic elements by telling them that they can only use five words. And this is a strategy that if you've ever had access to the Willis's have written really great um, task-based language teaching and learning uh, texts on, on how to create a whole host of task-based tools that are and activities that are excellent. So one of the things that they suggest is, is limiting how many words the students all of a sudden either have to add an adjective or they have to condense their, their writing. And, and this focuses them. So once they have the meaning, the title, then they work on the, the linguistic elements. Now students could, um, they could work together collaboratively, collaboratively in breakout rooms, and then they could turn in their title on a collaborative Google document or a Google Slides, 
but they could also use Padlet. So you could set up a Padlet board and um, students could work right there to come up with the title. And what's really nice about a collaborative board is then once everyone is finished, you as an instructor, again, you have this beautiful potpourri of options of titles that could fit with this caption. And then, of course, you would want to show them the actual uh, title of the article. And so recipes to stop uh, the phobia, tourist uh, phobia. And so, um, again, a fun title, a fun caption and a meaningful task. Uh, centered on presentational writing. Now at the intermediate, high, advanced, low boundary, here you're dealing with more text. So you see that they're gonna be working with the first two paragraphs in this article, not the entire article, just the first two paragraphs. And the goal here is that the learners would read these two paragraphs and a bit like a graphic organizer, they would have to illustrate what they read through either a picture, a comic strip, a word bank, um, they could basically show some way to characterize what they read in these two paragraphs. Collaboratively, you could do this with, um, they could do it on paper and then just very simply take a picture and then submit it that way. Or they could also do it with Padlet. Padlet allows for students to do a drawing um, and there are a whole host of ways that they could express their meaning of these two paragraphs through Padlet, which I really like because again, choice is really important to me in my practice. And so this would be one way that you could um, encourage that in this, in this activity. All right, so um, one uh, way that you could use this task-based method for the novice high intermediate low boundary is to provide them with a picture from that article. This picture is excellent because it uses a lot of cognates. Um, it's, again, pretty provocative. We see graffiti there. It's written in English, even though this article is in Spanish. So that's kind of nice. It helps scaffold some understanding here. Again, the goal would be that they would look at this picture and then instead their task here is that they have to come up with three questions in their group so that they could find out more about the article. And again, what I love about this task is that my students do the work for me. They're coming up with questions and I'm giving them the time and the space rather than saying, showing them this picture in a live synchronous meeting and saying, who has a question? Right, the same people often raise their hands, and we know that students and learners have different processing speed. And so, we provide the opportunity for all learners to get the chance to think about the picture, the title, and work together collaboratively to come up with three questions. Now, you, as the language instructor, you answer these questions, and if you feel like it's meaningful for your practice, you can also provide some holistic feedback on those questions. Because remember, this is the thing, according to Actful Guide guidelines that we need to work with on our novice high students, they must, in their transition to that intermediate proficiency boundary, um, all of our performance tasks uh, really need to have questions at the heart of it. We often forget that learners don't get a chance to ask questions, so do what you can in your warm-ups and in activities like this where task-based uh, language teaching is, is centered to give them the chance um, for them to come up with questions for you. Now, finally, I want to show you some project-based speaking assessments, and I have two here in the interest to stay simple uh, because uh, keep in mind I'm uh, drawing some ideas here from a five-week online course that I'm currently teaching, and so I, there's just so much out there, and there are so many free accessible tools for you, but uh, obviously in the interest of, of time here in this presentation, I'm trying to show you some tools that have been effective and that that include language teachers um, on all ends of the spectrum, on all ends of the continuum in terms of comfort levels. Um, when it comes to project-based speaking assessments, I, I love assessments, again, that encourage learners to um, show what they know and uh, to bring their own personality, their own style, and to, um, uh, to do something creative with language. So in this example, Adobe Spark is a really great platform uh, for digital storytelling and any type of presentation. It allows students to um, either use a picture and talk over that picture or use a caption or um, a couple words and, and to narrate those slides with their with their audio. You can also, students can also upload a video if they so choose. Um, and what's really nice about Adobe Spark is that it can be, again, because this is a technology, but what matters here is what we do with the technology, what we ask of our learners. So how we, um, how we adapt 
this tool for the task is really the important part. And that's the part where you and your expertise as the instructor, um, that is the importance in all the work that you are doing to facilitate this opportunity, this experience for your learners. So at the novice level, you might ask students to describe their family, pick four pictures and describe their family, or you might ask them to just describe a favorite place or to describe themselves. You at the novice level, the goal is for them to use high frequency words that you're uh, teaching them in their unit and fixed or uh, memorize chunks, right? That's really the goal. At the intermediate level, you might, um, you, you definitely want to get them beyond just the word level or memorize chunks. You want to get them using sentences. And so it's a great space for them to tell a story. Um, tell a story about their ideal vacation if you're working with a uh, simple future tense, for example. Um, and at the advanced level, one thing that I love to do with my uh, advanced uh, Spanish students is I uh, use a, a, an activity called Teach Me. So based off of what Whatever we're learning in, in the unit or in the module, I ask them to hone in on two things and to teach me those concepts in those in their own world words. And then I ask them to make it personal. So it's a teach me, make it personal type of assessment. They do four of these in the semester. So they hone in on two elements that they're learning and they put it in their own words, they give me examples, and then they talk to me about how that's impacting them personally. And I love that assessment so much. It tells me so much about uh, what they were able to learn and they demonstrate it by putting it in their own words, giving an example, and again, uh, drawing that connection personally and how it is impacting them. And so these are three different ways um, according to the level that you can use a tool like Adobe Spark. It is a very intuitive tool. It You would be surprised if you haven't used this yet, I encourage you to get on and, and play around with it. There is uh, there are this tutorial, um, if you click on it, it takes you to a tutorial um, and it can be an excellent resource for you um, to get started and to model to your students. You could do an introductory video. That's what I had um, my students in my graduate course do. They created a story, um, they created an introduction for their class, and then that just opens up the opportunity for students to do the same. And then you can use that tool, systematize it over the course of the semester for other types of creative uh, summative assessments that are speaking presentational speaking. A new one that just came out, and again, this is, um, well, in, in this case, this is uh, this is Apple. It's an Apple um, application, so that's one limitation, but it can be really fun. Apple Clips is really easy, so this, is, this might be a lower level, maybe a formative assessment that could go hand in hand with a summative Adobe Spark presentation. Um, but what's really great about this is that it has all of the, our languages that we teach, and students can use captions. So when they create it, maybe they're Maybe they're going to tell you about their plans for the weekend and they create an Apple Clips uh, video. What's so great is that they can choose pictures that they like to represent what they're going to do. There's a bunch of banners, which are a little bit like a poster or like a background with some text in there. And then as they're talking and narrating their short video, Apple Clips will provide an automatic caption and they can do it in the language. Now, this is incredible, especially for intermediate advanced learners because um, the captions are pretty accurate and so they could serve as a great pronunciation check too, right? So if the captions aren't working out as they think that they should be at what they're saying, then they might want to go back and really work on um, correcting how they're saying it in the target language so those captions come up quick. Uh, correct. So, all right. So, and then without um, further ado, I just want to bring your attention to two opportunities to keep on learning. Um, these are free resources for interpersonal speaking. I'm part of both Amber and I are um, the, the directors of the Pathways Project. And so you can go here to this website. Make sure you join our mailing uh, list. We have over 450 free fully editable, fleshed out resources um, for in language instructors to use to facilitate interpersonal speaking um, opportunities. They're task-based, they're super fun. Um, and again, they're adaptable. So you can, if you don't like something that is there, you can always edit it to fit your needs in your classroom. They're OER, so they're um, open, 
educational resources for you, please take the time to check it out because um, it can it can really help you and support you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then if you wanted to learn more, I also believe, as you know, in systems, right, and systematizing opportunities for our learners, but also systematizing uh, professional development opportunities. And I am the director of our Computer Assisted Language Learning Graduate Certificate at Boise State University. And as you can imagine, this uh, this summer I've been teaching uh, technology-enhanced language learning, and it's quite... Uh, well, it's, it's a great moment to be teaching that uh, that class. And so the tools that uh, language teachers are getting in that experience are directly applicable to um, to the times and will be directly applicable to a post-COVID era. So I encourage you to check it out if you're curious about how to really um, take the time to foster um, more uh, tips and tricks and strategies on how to implement technology in, uh, in your foreign language classroom. And with that, thank you.